career in cybersecurity. Uh, a little bit, uh, a little bit about myself. My name is Mike Redman. I have been doing this for uh, longer than I care to admit. Sometimes, uh, over 14 years, uh, you know, between IT and 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 cybersecurity specifically. Uh, I've been the senior IAPM for PEO Missiles in Space, the senior advisor to two and three star commanders. Uh, I hold a master's degree in cybersecurity, a bachelor's degree and network engineering, a handful of certifications, uh, including CISSP, CISM, uh, Certified Ethical Hacker, a handful of CompTIA certifications, and others uh, that just quite honestly don't, uh, don't fit on the slide. Um, now, believe it or not, all of that came after uh, I exited the uh, United States Marine Corps. Uh, they, you know, in, in the Marine Corps, I, I had nothing, well, near nothing, uh, really to do when it came to uh, to IT or computers or cybersecurity, uh, I was just another rifleman. Uh, my my uh, job was a 5711. Uh, for those of you that may know what that means, for those that you don't, uh, my title was a nuclear, biological, and chemical warfare specialist. Um, that's a fancy way of saying we did nothing more than play in the gas chamber uh, all uh, all the time. So. Um, but you know, it was fun, awesome experience, and it, you know, everything in, in what, what I'm going to talk to you about today, uh, everything from uh, then and prior, uh, got me to where to where I where I am uh, today. I encourage you to ask questions uh, along the way. I'll be checking the chat uh, regularly uh, if I can ask you know answer questions. Uh, during uh, during the webinar itself, uh, during the, the content of the webinar, I, I absolutely will. Uh, otherwise, feel free to type them in the chat, and uh, I will I will get to get to those questions uh, at the at the end of the webinar. So, uh, what are we going to talk about today? Everything from uh, helping you understand that wherever you are now, um, it, it does not dictate where you're where you're going, right? Uh, especially in, in, in this field, this is, uh, I, I mentor a, a, a lot of uh, young people and some older people uh, getting into cybersecurity and, 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 and try to help them understand that you, you may have preconceived notions of what, what you have to be able to do. Uh, to start a career in, in, in this field, and, and, and I promise you, uh, you don't, right? You know, you need to get rid of those preconceived notions, uh, and I'm going to explain a little bit uh, of that along the way. We're, we're going to talk about some of the demand in some of the different industries uh, that you may or may not be thinking of that, that have a high uh, need, right, that are actively searching and recruiting for uh, all levels of cyber specialists, right? Whether it's you know at entry level, all all the way up to uh, to expert, and and I'm going to try to help you understand how to map that out. How how do you go from maybe where you are to where you want to be? Uh, everyone may be in a different position, right? In in their in their evolution, uh, and maybe just not know what might be the next step to take or you just maybe want a little uh, advice or help to get to that next step. And so those, uh, for the, all of those people, that is why uh, I decided to do uh, this particular talk uh, today, to, to get everyone uh, as much help as they possibly can. And, and, and I'm sure you've heard that there, um, there is a severe shortage of cybersecurity professionals. And, and that is absolutely true. I deal with it every day. Um, you know, I, I don't have enough hands to do the, the huge tasks that I have to do uh, for the organizations that I either consult for or that I work, uh, work directly for. And, 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 you know, the more people that we can get uh, understood uh, how to get in this field uh, at the end of the day, and it's going to sound a little selfish, but it's the truth, it's going to make my job just a little bit easier um, believe it or not, I had hair uh, when I started when I when I started all of this. So, uh, so let's uh, let's get into it. So let's understand uh, first and foremost that technology moves fast, right? It, it moves faster than we could ever hope to keep up with it. 
but understanding it's not moving so fast that you can't catch up with it, right? You know, it, and, and I hope you understand w what that means, right? That, that um, you know, especially unless you're working, you know, for certain industries or for certain organizations, you don't have to necessarily be on the bleeding edge of everything. But as long as you have a good foundation under you, as long as you understand uh, the, how technology is uh, working around you and influencing your surroundings and, and in some ways being able to anticipate uh, what's coming next, those are the type of, of challenges that we're, that we're facing, right? You know, nobody has a crystal ball. We don't necessarily know uh, what the next hot thing is going to be. But in a lot, a lot of times it does telegraph it, it, itself, right? I mean, you, you, you kind of knew. I mean, if you think back, and, and, and of course, you know, hindsight being, you know, what it is, uh, but you could think back and say, you know, everyone's going to want a Bluetooth speaker, right it's just it's just much more convenient you know who doesn't want you know for instance to set up a backyard you know patio area with music and and those of you that can remember and and i'm going to try not to date myself too much uh how much of a uh challenge it was to hardwire speakers uh in your backyard patio well, now I don't have to hardwire speakers because I can connect via, you know, connect speakers, you know, one or many uh, via Bluetooth. So you could kind of, you can kind of see just by what the marketplace demands, uh, what the next thing is going to be. Uh, more recently, uh, you know, IoT, right, the Internet of Things, you, you, you saw it and you knew everyone was going to want it. Who doesn't want to be able to adjust their thermostat and turn their lights on and off from anywhere in the world? No matter if you're if you're here, that means that you're you have a little bit of nerd in you and whether you're an early adopter or a late adopter, you knew when you saw it that at some point in time, you wanted to be able to turn your lights off from across the country, right? And, and those are the things, those are the type of professionals that we're hoping to, to, to uh, recruit and, and nurture. The people that, that understand that technology is not going anywhere, it's, it's here to stay, it, it rules everything around us. And especially now, right, with, with um, with with the coronavirus and everyone kind of being you know sheltered in place, you, you can you see with glaring clarity the the organizations that not necessarily leaned forward, but leaned into technology, uh, the ones that were able and capable um, to move directly from an on-site work environment to an off-site work environment. Uh, the, the organizations that were in the, you know, some of the cities and municipalities and states that were easy, uh, that were easily able to move from traditional school settings to distance learning settings, right? You, you, this time right now is, is a glaring example of, of uh, organizations and companies and, and industries that are going to thrive going forward, and you're going to see that a little, you know, you know, throughout this throughout this talk that we're going to have it, that that those are the ones, those are the industries that are in high demand, um, and because there's a shortage, you have the ability to position yourself for high reward if you take some of the right some of the right steps, right? So when I say in high demand, right, you know, what does it mean? So you, you all, you, you hear these terms like um, there is a need for skilled security experts. Well, what does that really mean? What, what is a skilled security expert? Well, if you think about it, oops, I'm sorry. If you think about it in, in the most general logical terms, Think about the, what people, the average person knows about, about computers and computing, um, you know, just setting security and cybersecurity to the side for a second. If you know more than them, 
you have become skilled. You have become a, a source of information uh, for them. Um, so it, that's why I say don't have preconceived notions about what it takes to get into the the, the cybersecurity field. What literally what this field is about? It, it's it's Darwinism at its best. Um, the, the harder you work, the more reward you're going to get. Uh, and it goes not only for hard skills, not only do I know, you know, the architecture of a computer or how to administer a server, you know, whether it be, you know, a domain controller and, you know, an exchange server. Um, you know, do I know, uh, you know, how to develop applications? Do I know, you know, software development? It, it, it really comes down to do I know more than the next person? And can I demonstrate that? Right. So those are those are those are the hard skills that everyone wants to concentrate on. What I, I, I hope to be able to get across to you uh, over the course of this next uh, half hour or so is not only the importance of the hard skills, but the importance of the soft skills uh, as well. Uh, I hire a, a lot of people doing doing what I do, and it, it, I, I will attest that it's not always the person with the most uh, hard skills on their resume that I select. Um, it, a lot of it does come down to how well can they uh, perform the soft skills? How well do they communicate? How skilled are they at you know being able to get a point across? That is as much as a, of a security expert or security professional as any of the soft or any of the hard skills uh, can can possibly be. So hopefully, hopefully you can you know, you're understanding that. And, and like I said, if you have any questions uh, as we go along, feel free uh, to just jump in and 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 put them in. Like I said, put them in the chat or put them in the Q and A, and I will be more than happy uh, more than happy to answer them uh, along the way. So uh, specifically when it comes to certain industries across uh, the cybersecurity landscape, uh, we notice and we understand that we are more and more reliant on interconnectivity. Uh, again, you, you really need to look no further than the last three to four months to understand how interconnected we are. And some of the disciplines within uh, the cybersecurity field are disciplines that people may not necessarily recognize you know, immediately as a cybersecurity field. Um, so let's do this. Let's, let me offer you a, a definition of what uh, encompasses cybersecurity. And, and this is a question that I get uh, at work all, you know, all the time, you know, the, the, the day job that, that I go to uh, on most days, as well as the organizations that I can you know, consult for because they, they don't understand necessarily what is cybersecurity. Well, so the definition that I'm gonna offer you is, is simply this. Uh, things that I, as a cybersecurity director, need to uh, be aware of and have oversight to is anything that can affect either uh, negatively or positively the confidentiality, integrity, or availability of the data of that organization. Now, if you accept that simple definition, try to think of all the things that affect confidentiality, integrity, and availability of data within an organization. And the longer that list gets, the more you can see how you don't necessarily have to be a keyboard warrior to enter a cybersecurity field. You may already have or may already be in a cybersecurity field as we define it currently and just not know it. One uh, example that I can offer you, for instance, is supply chain risk management. Supply chain risk management is a, is a cybersecurity field. How do you apply that or what, you know, what can I give you from you know, an example from today 
of how supply chain risk management or poor supply chain risk management can affect an organization uh, of, of overall, whether it be you know an organization singularly as a corporation, whether it be a, a, a governmental organization, whether it be a nation, supply chain risk management can, or poor supply chain risk management can affect uh, adversely your ability to meet a mission. So for example, uh, our current uh, hospital capability, right? Our, our current hospital capacity as a nation was not prepared for all hospitals to be overwhelmed at once. We're very modularized in this country, right? So while uh, Kansas, their hospitals were fine. They weren't seeing a, a huge surge in, in patients coming in uh, with a strange unknown virus. Uh, New York, California, uh, New Orleans, they got overwhelmed, but because the rest of these states were now anticipating being overwhelmed, the surplus of supplies that they had in other states could not necessarily be given up to states that needed it. How could that have been fixed? Well, it could have been fixed from just observing the supply chain. Where do we get these supplies? Um, what happens if the supply chain is disrupted? Uh, what happens uh, if the supply chain is, is tainted? These are all things that I, as a cybersecurity professional, that I, as, as the director uh, for cybersecurity of a defense contractor, these are things that go into decisions that I make every single day. And none of them necessarily require me to be able uh, to uh, you know, bend code or you know, write programs uh, or hack a box from across, from across the planet. It is overall holistic security. So don't be afraid if you, don't, if you don't necessarily know all the details of technology because you don't need to to get into this, to get into this field. Uh, this field is wide and varied and many talents serve the needs of this field. And there are many industries and organizations looking specifically for people that have what, what, what I call non-classical uh, cybersecurity talents, if, if, that, if that makes sense. So um, how do you mold yourself to get where you want to go? And what is the advantage uh, of doing so? Well, breaches are happening every single day. Uh, some of them you hear about, most of them you don't. Um, but depending on the industry or the organization, they need people capable or, or able to not only prevent the breach from happening, but be able to respond when the breach does happen, because it will, um, as well as people able and capable of um, reducing overall liability for an organization when the breach happens, uh, regardless of the attack origin, right? We put a lot of things in this, this basket that we call uh, cybercrime, right? And, and it's one of those things that, that it, it, it has become a catch-all for things uh, that we just don't know where to put other things, right? And, and, and at this point, the basket is getting kind of, uh, is kind of overflowing, if, you know, if, if you understand. Um, not all things that are necessarily labeled as cybercrime are truly cybercrime, uh, but that is an advantage to us, right? To, to current and prospective future cybersecurity professionals, it's an advantage for people to keep putting more and more into that catch-all basket because that means they're gonna need more and more varied skill sets to be able to accommodate all of these 
different things going into this into this catch-all basket. Um, so understand that uh, one of the first things that I that I uh, advise people is that over time, the one field, if you look back just through history, right, go back to uh, the late 90s ish uh, up till now, there is one distinct field that regardless of the economic situation of a uh, locale or uh, the nation has always increased. And that is cybersecurity. Cybersecurity is currently what, what, you know, and for the foreseeable future, what I call a recession proof field. While people are scaling down other types of skilled labor, those positions that they are giving up are that the money allocated for those positions are being shifted towards cybersecurity positions. That only means uh, good things for those that can position themselves well uh, now to take advantage of them when they're available, right? Uh, the, the market for cybersecurity is expected to grow to over $152 billion between 2018 and then 2023 from $152 billion to $248 billion. That's a hundred plus fold increase. Why would you not take advantage of it if you have the ability to do so? And I am living proof that the ability, right, is nothing less than your ability to chase after it. Um, I, you know, I, I, I try to find a different way to, to, to try, you know, to try to make people understand that, but, you know, honestly, I cannot, you know, find, you know, kind of a more direct way of saying that you, your, your ability in this field is limited by only you. Um, is it hard? Sure. Is it difficult? No, not really. Um, you know, whether you're single, young, you know, fresh out of high school, um, you know, no kids, you know, no, you know, not married, all the way up to you're thinking about changing a career, and you know, you have, you know, a sing you're a single parent by yourself you know, just, you know, having to make, make it happen. Um, it is possible if you're willing to just, just attack it. Right. Um, one of the questions that, that I get asked is, is often is, did I, you know, have I ever, uh, or did I ever get discouraged as I began, um, moving in moving into this into this field because uh, like i said it and cybersecurity was was not my first choice coming out of high school uh, my original degree uh you know i grew up in columbus ohio uh i went to school in a small suburb of columbus ohio called uh, called westerville uh westerville ohio um I went to the Ohio State University. Originally, I was in pre-law and decided I didn't want to take a whole bunch of history classes uh, and ended up with a bachelor's degree in psychology. And, you know, to look over the last 30 years, 30 plus years, how did I get from a bachelor's degree in psychology uh, to advising, uh, you know, three-star generals about cybersecurity posture uh, for, you know, for the military? Uh, and, and did I get discouraged when I made that, that shift? Uh, and the answer is yes, right? You know, I went back to school uh, at the age of, uh, I think I was 29, 29, 30 years old. Um, and I saw all these, all these young kids around me 
uh, that knew, you know, the, the latest and greatest and hottest graphics card to do this and, you know, how to build this gaming computer to do that. And, and, you know, I didn't know any of, any of that. I mean, I had always been around computers. I'd always used computers. Um, but I'm, you know, I'm a son of an English teacher, right? You know, so she just made, you know, my mother made me use computers because she knew that computers were going to be around. Um, but one of my instructors, you know, I voiced, you know, my concerns to one of my instructors. Um, and he told me, he said, you know, mark my words, half of these kids that know the latest, greatest graphics card and what to put into what gaming computer or whatever, they're going to flame out before, before graduation. Um, you know, so just keep doing what you're doing and you're, and you'll be fine. And, and sh sure enough, the class that I started with whittled itself down by about half, uh, by time, by time graduation, uh, came up. Uh, so, uh, that's, you know, just, just, you know, one example uh, of many I could give you that, that yes, you're going to get discouraged along the way because no, it's not easy but it's also not difficult. It's hard. It's going to be work, but the reward is paid. The reward is paid tenfold if you put your, if you put your mind to it. So it uh, looks like I have a question in the chat. Can you provide uh, an example of someone entering this field from some IT background, but no cybersecurity expertise while obtaining a certificate from FAU? Um, FAU, I'm, I'm going to assume uh, that that is Florida Atlantic University, uh, maybe. That's right. Um, so, again, I am that example. Uh, when, when I went back to school, my, my intent was I, I wanted to build networks. I wanted to be a network architect. Um, and uh, so all I wanted, you know, I, I was you know, I went and, you know, pursued my CCNA and then my CCNP. Uh, and I just wanted to build and design network architectures. Uh, and over time, pretty quickly, honestly, uh, security just took over, right? Uh, people, yes, they wanted networks built, but they wanted networks built securely. So I had to look, I had to learn more and more about how to do uh, what I had been trained to do, right? What my bachelor's degree was in, in network network engineering, uh, but not only just not how to just make it work, but how to make it work uh, securely. Uh, so uh, I, I I made a, a distinct shift, uh, moving from just building networks uh, to designing secure networks, and then ultimately advising. Uh, about those networks. Um, now, I, uh, I landed in uh, the Department of Defense, right? And, you know, I've, I've worked uh, for, for the DOD uh, kind of from the beginning, right? I mean, I had, I had a short stint for a couple years as an IT director uh, for a casino down in Biloxi, Mississippi. Uh, but uh, quickly, right? Just, you know, and, and I think it was just because I had friends that were still in the service or recently, you know, left the service. I got pulled back into the Department of Defense. Um, you know, so, and, and I've been in the federal sector, you know, kind of ever since. But uh, I have lots of friends, uh, more friends otherwise than that are in the Department of Defense uh, that work for other sectors. Right, uh, whether it, whether it, it's banking or or retail or or uh, uh, energy, uh, healthcare, uh, health cyber security, healthcare cybersecurity is one of the of all of the cybersecurity sectors, right, um, or areas uh, is probably the most explosive uh, right now. Um, because of some of the u very unique challenges that you run into uh, in the healthcare industry. Um, you know, there are just, you know, there are things that, for instance, uh, I, as, a, as, as a, a cyber director for Walmart, uh, and how I would mitigate an issue or a pending issue or an active issue, uh, 
in, in a chain of Walmart stores, I cannot employ that in a hospital uh, because it would involve, you know, cutting off data streams and, and quarantining uh, uh, devices and things like that. And those devices may be keeping someone alive. Right. So uh, it, it, I have to approach those those types of, of issues uh, holistically different than I would elsewhere. And so, you know, it, 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 it takes uh, a certain kind of mentality, right, to be able to think through some of those kind of life and death situations that you're going to be dealing with uh, when it comes to cyber in uh, in the healthcare industry. But if that's an industry that, that excites you, uh, maybe you have a background in healthcare, uh, which it will do nothing more than, than help you, right? I mean, if you're an EMT now uh, or a nurse now, uh, moving into security and cybersecurity in the healthcare field will be just that much easier for you because you're already going to understand some of the challenges that, that face the professionals in in those areas, right? Um, one of the things, as I talk to you know some of my peers around the country, uh, and ask them, okay, so what do you look for, or what what have you found over time is, is the best uh, hire that you've made, and and a, a lot of them tell me that they're individuals that they already worked in that sector, right? They already worked in banking uh, or they already worked in healthcare or they already worked in retail and uh, they made a, a move over into cybersecurity. Uh, they you know, ultimately became shining, shining stars uh, because they already kind of knew the challenges right, that they faced in, you know, just in a different area. Uh, so they came at problems uh, with a different approach, right? None of them necessarily had an IT or a computer background. It's just they decided one day that they were going to shift, uh, you know, kind of career paths. So um, kind of, you know, you might want to keep that in mind. What you, you might be doing something now in an industry that you really love being in, right, or, or, or a sector that you really love being in, you don't necessarily have to leave that sector just to switch a career path, right? Uh, it, a lot of cybersecurity is and can be lateral movement if you, if you allow it to be, I, I guess, is, is the moral of that story. Um, excuse me. I... So I told you, right, that, that I, at one point, I, wanted, I was pre-law, right, when I first got out of high school. And I, to this day, am still considering um, killing myself and going back to school uh, to get a law degree uh, because it has been identified that there is a severe shortage of lawyers that understands cyber and cybersecurity. So those are the types of things, right? You know, as, as I live my life, those are the types of things that, that I look for is where is there somewhere I can take advantage of to give myself a leg up, you know, some, somewhere. Um, you know, you know there, there's a saying what that, that, you know, life is what you make it. It's not what's given to you. Right, so the more articles I read that there's a shortage of lawyers that understand cybersecurity, well, maybe that's something I can take advantage of. Um, so even now, at this point in, in my career, I'm, I'm considering uh, going online, going to an online law school uh, to get a JD degree to, you know, possibly, you know, uh, start, um, not necessarily, I don't think I want to practice law, but, you know, having a law degree and doing cyber, you know, kind of would, you know, kind of gives me uh, the ability, right, to, to open doors and do things that I maybe can't, can't do currently, right? Um, so, let's see, Galaxy says, I currently work as a physical security officer in healthcare environment uh, and school district. Uh, thank you uh, very much for what you're doing. 
uh, I have a bachelor's in law and thinking of starting a master's in information assurance and cybersecurity. What's your advice? Uh, do it. Do it. Um, if you already have a, 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 a law degree and all you have to do is finish what, you know, what, what would it be uh, your the, the, uh, graduate, uh, graduate degree uh, and pulling information assurance and cybersecurity in with it, you at the end of that road, right? You probably have three, four more years to do, but at the end of that road, uh, I can probably guarantee you, you will write your own check pretty much wherever you want to go. Um, that, that is, you know, I, I have read, you know, just these past four months alone, I've read three different articles uh, looking for people just like you, just like you. Um, currently, what is the hottest uh, or some of the hottest trends when it comes uh, to cybersecurity? Uh, right now, it's all centered around cybersecurity architects and cybersecurity engineers. Um, and I think kind of for, for, you know, for obvious reasons, right? So, uh, so uh, cybersecurity architects, uh, more, those are more, you know, for instance, like, you know, what, what I do. Um, uh, I have a team of individuals that, you know, that, that do, you know, scanning and uh, do malware analysis and install and administer VPNs and routers and, and switches and, you know, things like that. Um, employ, you know, cryptographic mechanisms. Uh, and uh, I, you know, I simply oversee them, right? Uh, making sure that we've, you know, asked all the right questions and we've, you know, approached everything in as many different directions as, as we possibly can. Uh, th those, you know, are people that usually fall more into the, you know, the security architect uh, bucket. Uh, security engineers, uh, generally those are uh, usually more your, your coders. Right, application uh, developers, you know, thing, you know, things like that. Uh, malware analysts, right? They, you know, people that like tearing apart code uh, to try to find uh, issues and vulnerability with it. Uh, those are two fields that that again are are probably in the most demand uh, right now, uh, and just seeing their earning potential, right? Just seeing how much money on average, right? These, these are average salaries that I pulled out, you know, just pulled straight out of, you know, I think dice.com or you know, I think it was, uh, just seeing that the average for an architect, is, you know, $120,000 a year, an average for an engineer, uh, nearly $100,000 a year. Um, and, and to do it, right, you know, whether or not you do it currently or not is kind of immaterial because this is, these are subjects that kind of anyone can learn uh, as long as you, you know, as long as you put your mind to it. Now, some people have a better aptitude for some things than others. Uh, I found out very early in my career that in no way, shape or form was I ever going to be a happy coder. Uh, I don't, I don't have the patience uh, to sit and look through thousands of lines of code to, to find the wrong procedure call that's, you know, making it say goodbye world instead of hello mom, right? That's just, that's just not me. I don't have, I'm not built for that. Um, but uh, being able to look at a, a network architecture and, and all the devices and data flows and seeing where issues are, right? I just, I just was more apt, you know, in, in that direction. So that's kind of the direction the direction that I pushed. So, uh, you know, a lot of it, yes, depends on your personality. Um, but again, there is a way to find your personality in, in any one uh, of these careers. So, so um, what does it take, right? You know, so other than the obvious, right, short, you know, the, the classical route of, you know, getting a bachelor's degree in, in one uh, or more of the technology fields, like information technology or information systems, uh, things like that. This is one of those fields that relies still heavily on certification. Um, and so the certifications that are most sought after, kind of most important, uh, as you 
either are beginning your career or advancing your career. Uh, you know, things like Security Plus and Linux Plus uh, are kind of staples. They're kind of, you know, absolutes. Uh, a CISSP or a CISM uh, are highly sought after certifications uh, because those certifications have a high degree of, of uh, repute, right? You know, they're, they're highly respected. Uh, you know, people that can pass those exams uh, have shown uh, an absolute proficiency to, you know, to know kind of what they're doing uh, with things. Uh, a certified ethical hacker is, is I think, going to be around for, for a good long time. Um, you, it, it's one of those, you know, depending on what position I'm hiring for, um, you, it really depends on how much weight I give the certified ethical hacker certification, but uh, it is absolutely a certification that I use as a delimiter, right? You know, all things being equal, right? You know, if I have two equal candidates, one has a CEH and one does not, uh, I, I have a tendency to lean towards a CEH. Now, some of that may be just some biases on my, uh, on my part, because uh, when I first entered the DOD, uh, my first job for three years in the DOD, I was, I was working on, on red teams. Uh, so, you know, I kind of lean towards that way. Um, but, you know, kind of take that you know, with a grain of salt. One that is, uh, may, you may find unusual or even surprising uh, that if you have the ability, I highly recommend uh, at least exploring uh, is, is going and getting a Splunk architect certification. Uh, the world is moving and well, not is, has moved to big data, big data analyzation. Uh, that's how we're finding, you know, advanced persistent threats. And, and, though, and that certification, that specific software is one that is enjoying uh, a resurgence across across the country so um if if you like analyzation if you like you know uh decomposing uh audit logs and, and things like that uh getting a splunk certification again will raise your value uh within the field as a whole uh quite a bit uh, honestly it, it it will um so let's see, I got a couple more questions here. Uh, let's see, I joined to cybersecurity back in India for two months and changed my career to hotel management uh, from Scotland. I've always wanted to visit Scotland. I haven't gotten there yet. Uh, basically, I kind of live in the US, so I continue to change my career, cybersecurity expert, uh, but I have no background, but can I still join from scratch? Um, yes, you, you can. Uh, there, there is not an age limit uh, on this career. Uh, this career, does, this career field does not have a shelf life. Um, and you know, I guess I can, you know, maybe qualify that by okay. So, what careers do I feel have a shelf life? Um, for instance, I don't think right now uh, at my age, uh, which I am a very, I'm going to continue to say, very young, 46 years old. Uh, I don't think I could go back to medical school and become a doctor, right? Uh, that's kind of one of those fields I, I kind of feel have a, have a shelf life. Um, and then in contrast, this is not that type of field. You can, you can get into it, you know, kind of literally at any age, uh, you know, that, that you make that decision. Um, my name is uh, Sobia. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Uh, uh, Bachelor of Arts degree, CH, C, uh, CHFI. Next month, going to take the CCNA, uh, doing IT support for, for Google. Well, good for you. I also applied uh, boot camps, uh, but you don't, but you didn't show up. Um, So I'm not sure what you're asking. Uh, it's, uh, let's see, I also applied for security boot camp in your university, but you don't show up. Uh, so you, you might have to expand on that a little bit and, and tell me what and kind of tell me what you mean. I don't show up. Um, but uh, in general, uh, I will say, and I and I I'd, I'll have to uh, uh, default to Shane, uh, but I do not believe the master's um, requires the GRE. Uh, I, I I don't believe so. 
what I can tell you is where I received my uh, master's, I did not have to take, a, take the GRE. Uh, all I had to do is have a, a bachelor's in uh, the same, uh, same career path. Right. So uh, that's a good question. And, and, and I, will, I will see if I can find that answer for you. Uh, I believe I have your email address, so I will search your email address off the list. And as soon as I find an answer for you, I'm sh uh, uh, we'll get you we'll get you an answer. Um, the last certification that I referenced, oh, the last certification I referenced was the Splunk Certified Architect. Uh, this uh, that is a, a, an outstanding certification, not super hard to get uh, if you've ever you know dealt with any type of data analyzation. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it, it is, you know, fairly pedestrian to, to attain. Uh, and a lot of, um, uh, a lot of uh, employers are, are starting to search for, for Splunk certified professionals. So, um, yes, yes, I can. Um, so, uh, what are the skills? that are absolute, uh, absolute skills um, or areas, right? I guess would be best for me to say, um, intrusion analysis, malware analysis, uh, those are kind of more detailed oriented uh, 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 skill sets. Uh, people that like to tear apart code and, and, and uh, tear apart uh, uh, audit logs and, and, and things like that. Uh, those, you know, those types of skills, analytical skills, uh, will help you uh, will help you achieve uh, programming skills. If you've ever been interested in writing programs or writing applications or or you know, you know anything like that, uh, always they're always looking uh, for programmers. Not necessarily programmers that quote unquote are good programmers. Uh, it, the market has sh has shifted to people that just know how to program. They know the language, uh, but they pay attention to security uh, ahead of uh, necessarily application, right? Um, uh, risk analysis and security analysis, uh, those are people that are more broad-based, right? They're, they take a more macro look at, at things. Uh, what is, you know, the organization or the, the corporation's overall uh, risk posture, where are we absorbing risk? Where can we um, eliminate uh, some risk in some places, you know, to accept risk in, in others? So, um, you know, most all of those types of positions, risk analysis and security, you know, security risk analysis, uh, they are, they're, they're very macro based uh, types of, of skill sets. Uh, and, and if that's you, right, if, if you like to take and look at a big problem uh, and then decompose it down into uh, kind of smaller problems, uh, that, you know, is probably a, a, a good career field for you to consider. Uh, again, that's the, the type of person, for instance, that, that I am. Uh, I like to, you know, all the organizations that I've taken over, uh, in the last five years of my career or so, um, they were just broken organizations. They were, you know, I kind of view them as a thousand piece puzzle and I want to put the puzzle back together, right? Uh, you can't do it all at once. You got to find a piece at a time and make it fit. Um, put the borders on, you know, put the clouds together. Uh, and then ultimately, finally, you'll have one complete puzzle again. Uh, and, and, and that's, you know, that's what risk analysis and, and overall cybersecurity analysis for an organization uh, entails is, is you kind of have to like to put puzzles, uh, puzzles together.